Working memory. This is a quick video on cognitive psychology. The source of this is from Psy246 from Macquarie University on yeah cognitive psychology. So patient KF was found to be unable to repeat verbal material due to having damage in the left parietal occipital area, causing a fracture. He had normal long-term memory, but poor short-term memory. As a result, this led to the creation of the multi-store model of memory, whereby an object is perceived, creating uh, sensory stores, and then that moves into short-term storage, and then long-term storage. The problem with this model, however, is that it's too simplistic. The model isn't just these three processes. There are many other processes at play in working memory alone. Miyaki et al. 2000 use a task switching, which was in the form of multiplication and division, as well as an updating task to get participants to remember the last digit. And there was a strip task involved. Executive function was found to be many different things and involve inhibition, shifting, and updating function. So to begin with, one also has to consider attention. This is the central executive, whereby it's a control system like attention that deals with cognitively demanding tasks. It includes inhibition, where it causes individuals to stop engaging in tasks. Shifting, which is causing individuals to change to other tasks and updating functions, which causes individuals to update tasks. The strip test was used to ask individuals to recognize the color of words and not what the words say. And as a result, we can uh, measure whether one is attentive or not. One is capable of inhibiting saying the color of the word and not the name of it or being able to update or shift. Convention scheduling is where due to greater practice the reading of certain words become automatic and hence um, this explains the strip test why individuals read the words as opposed to um, state the actual color of it. An interesting side note is that young children are able to grasp the color quickly because um, they can't read. Okay, supervisory attentional systems. This was discovered by Norman and Chalice in 1986, whereby there is a full conscious control that selects certain action schemas and helps to override convention schedules. So this is using the full range of the central executive inhibiting, shifting, and updating functions to override this um, convention schedule, which is almost a second nature to us, basically. And the last thing I'll talk about in the central executive is this executive syndrome, which is when individuals have a lack of self-initiation or motivation, have time management problems, and persistently or are easily distracted by certain tasks. Individuals with this syndrome, it is believed that they have um, a dysfunctional central executive. The next important thing I want to cover in working memory is the phonological loop, which is also defined as the inner voice. It holds information in speech form and it has a phonological store whereby there is verbal information which is held for 1.5 to 2 seconds and there is articulatory control process which is a sub-vocal speech where rehearsal takes place. So that's the inner voice in your head that keeps rehearsing over and over again to remember about this certain word. The phonological loop is used to learn new vocabulary and language. Important things to consider include the phonological similarity effect, whereby it tests serial recall of letters in its right order, and it was found that short-term memory uses phonological codes for visually presented stimuli due to acoustic errors being made even though letters are visually shown. So speech format was used to encode um, visual stimuli. Badly, in 1966, compared phonologically similar versus dissimilar sounds and words and it was found that the more similar the word sounded the more it made individuals confused 
the word length effect. This is a list of words that were spoken and participants were asked to recall the list of words. Memory span was lower for words that took a long time to say and this was called articulatory duration because it takes time to, to say these words, right? And the time taken to say these words choose away at other time that could be spent to rehearse other words. Concurrent articulation. This is when there is irrelevant articulation, making useless, meaningless noises. Concurrent articulation is just like gibberish or gobbledygook. So for example, articulatory suppression eliminated the phonological similarity effect and also eliminated the word length effect because it prevented subvocal articulatory rehearsal from occurring. So by just saying the same useless noise or number or phrase or whatever, this really hindered and suppressed the articulatory control process. And thus individuals were unable to access that subvocal speech. Additionally, there is the visual spatial sketch pad. This is colloquially referred to as the inner eye, where spatial visual coding and manipulation takes place. It includes the visual cache, which stores information about a visual form and color, and the inner scribe, which processes spatial and movement information. This was found by Logie in 1995. To experiment and test the visual spatial sketch pad, there is the cause eye blocks task, which is a spatial task, and it assesses how participants imitate and um, recognize a pattern of tapping a certain order of blocks. And there is also the visual pattern task, which is a primarily visual task, whereby subjects are required to mark and fill cells. And this has reduced spatial performance due to the interference of having to follow pegs by touch. Also, visual interference could be implemented by showing an abstract painting whilst the participant uh, fills out cells. So visual interference in both the quasi blocks task and visual pattern task reduce visual memory and um, spatial interference obviously reduce spatial memory. So this led to the speculation that there were two separate um, coding processes in the visual spatial sketch pad, one being of course the visual cache and in a scribe as mentioned prior. Finally, I will be talking about the episodic buffer. The episodic buffer integrates the phonological and visual spatial information into long-term memory. It's basically the gap between um, short to long term. Therefore, in conclusion, we looked at working memory. We looked at the multi-store model of memory. We also looked at the central executive, as well as things like the inhibition shifting and updating functions, the Stroop task, convention scheduling, supervisory attentional systems, or SAS, dissecative syndrome. We looked at the phonological loop, the phonological store, articulatory control processes, the phonological similarity effect, concurrent articulation, word length effect, visual spatial sketch pad, the visual cache, the inner scribe, the quasi blocks task, the visual pattern task. And finally, we looked at the episodic buffer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Join me in the next video whereby I talk about attention. Bye bye.